we go again Monday weekend we're flying by eh? and the least one thing the mornings are pulling out and the, certainly the evenings are pulling out it's getting really really good I hope everybody's okay staying safe well keep dry if you can because we had a bit of a rough you know a bit of, a bit of rain there didn't see he, he dropped a bit or two there so uh, but it's gone a bit colder now but that don't matter wrap up warm and just keep safe so uh, and here we've only got a couple of birthdays here today uh, dear friend of mine a great dear friend of mine from i say up the liverpool area really but pat ross on or patricia she's same thing but i just wish you a happy, very happy birthday from down here in ale in cornwall and uh i hope you're okay keep smiling keep smiling it's going to be all right and then on wednesday come in is my well my niece's um andrea costa um, it's her birthday, so um, happy birthday to Andrea on Wednesday. So that's good. So that's a couple of them there. Now I'm just going to do um, a little one here today about from um, Herbert Lean. <coughs> Hello, Mrs. James said, "Mother comes in. I'm glad. Some glad to see. You. Take us off your hat. We was then talking about it." Oh, I ain't going to stay," she replied as she took off her hat and drew up a chair to hold fire. What was he saying about me? Well, we got Teddy Keck for tea, said Richard Henry, and Mother Oaks, nobody didn't come in. Get us back, Feather. I want to see the hum. Wind been wrong way all day. Nearly ready, tis. Sure you went stop and have some, Mrs. James. Well, since you're so pressing, I will. But I promised to go down Aunt Liz's night. How? Oh, how is she now, poor soul? Oh, can't sleep at night. Can't sleep? How's that? I could sleep on a furze bush. Well, you know her brother that has just died and left her three houses. Now she been up all night abusing him cause he didn't have them painted afore he went. Are we going to wait till Mrs. James is gone afore we have tea? asked Richard Henry. Certainly not, said Mother. Draw up the table, all of thee. Where's my frying pan? I bet he's in next door, screamed the parrot. Richard Henry, put an under the spence again, will he? And put a white old sheet over him. I'm covered up like old Tobias, croaked the parrot. Nice bit of cake, my heart, Mrs. James. I fancy I could eat a bit more. Well, you ain't have em, said Virginia. You have one more piece of me now. I must give Mother credit for being able to bake such a nice bit of cake. Man down the shop said he hadn't going to give nobody any more credit. I wouldn't go in that shop again if I could help it, said Mrs. James. He had two lots of currants in the window, one marked for six, six paper pound, and the other for eight. I couldn't see no difference, and when I asked him what was the difference, he said tuppence. Some dear he is too. Last payday, I wanted to know how the candles was gone up. It's on to the war, he replied. I wanted to know how couldn't they fight by daylight. Laughed, he did. I don't mind being done down, but they aren't going to be laughed at. <clears throat> He isn't bad for putting any notice in the window. Yesterday he had one saying, a second-hand invalid chair for, for sale. Suit an elderly lady without worms. Tis time for little boys be in bed. Come on, Richard Henry, and mind you say your prayers. Can I take the parrot up bed with me? He can say, he can say them better than I can. No, you can't, so there. Richard Henry grabbed the last piece of cake and bolted. Have you heard the latest about Tom Tiddlywink? No, what is it? Well, you know his mother don't want for him to get married. Want to keep him as long as she did live. Last night he was out in the outhouse searching after dark. Mother heard him say she did and asked him what he wanted. Where's the lantern? Lantern, she said. I know you're going courting. I never had no lantern when I was courting. I shouldn't think you did when I look upon father. He'll never be married, said Mother. He's too shy. I seen him coming up the lane last night, all dressed up he was. So I said, well, Tom, did he see her? Yes, said he. And she would have seen me if I didn't ducky down behind the hedge. It's that time. It's at nine o'clock, to strike it. I must be going. No time flies. Watch your hurry, didn't let. We shan't go bed yet. Oh, thank you, but I must go. I've had a very nice evening so long. See again. So long, said Mother. Come in any time, as she barred the door. 
Well, I thought she was never going. Shove up bit feather, let's have bit fire. Take care.